everybody. It is me, Alexis Maurice, and Mr. Hollywood. And it is time for our review of episode five, season 14 of The Real Pies. What? No, The Real Housewives. The Real Who? The House of Wives. Santa. So go ahead and pour yourself a glass of wine. Fill it up because we got a lot to discuss in this episode here, honey. Lots of tea, lots of shade. Go ahead and like this video. Share it on all of your social media platforms. Make sure that you subscribe because if you don't, I'm going to call Tyrone. Call him. Call him. And tell him, come on, help you come get on, your come shit. Come on, come on. Call him. That's what Sheree should have been. Tyrone ain't answering the phone when you call him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so they know you should call him. This shit gonna still be at your damn house, Sheree, girl. So this episode continues with the ladies being in New York City. And at the end of the episode, my heart broke. I'm not going to tell you no lie. My heart broke for Sheree, seeing her out there in the cold with her fur. She looked good, girl. Now, Sheree, you look good, girl. But I cannot believe you got got an ex-con, got you sitting on the curb waiting for him to show up, girl. Tyrone was supposed to come to the play. He didn't come to the play. Mm-hmm. Tyrone was supposed to come to the lunch date with the girls. Mm-hmm. He didn't come to the lunch date with the girls as well. Mm-hmm. Sheree drove her ass. Excuse me, she didn't drive. She called an Uber and you know it was expensive. She called an Uber from New York City to Philadelphia to Philly, which is like 90 something miles to go see Tyrone. And Tyrone was a no call, no show girl. Trey, what did you think about Tyrone not showing up. Like you, I was hurt for her. You know, y'all often say that cancers are sensitive. You know, we, you know, we blah, blah, whatever. And are. And you know, are. We, we just in touch with our, our emotional side. And I felt for her because I don't want to say I've been in that situation, but I've waited on a person before. It was actually on my birthday. How long and did you wait? I waited... I waited a couple of hours, but I was at home. I was at home waiting, but I waited a couple of hours and I actually had got dumped on my birthday. Um, you got dumped on your birthday? Yes. Got dumped <laughs> on my birthday. Ooh, so <laughs> I, um, I felt... <laughs> Child, he pulled a Laura Harvey on your ass. <laughs> sorry, that is not funny. I'm so sorry, Trey. He... <laughs> Fuck your birthday, bitch. (laughs) (laughs) How fun is that for you to get dumped on your birthday? Yeah, on my birthday. Um, And so I knew how it felt for her to sit there and be waiting. So I actually got emotional, dropped like a little tear, you know what I'm saying, for her. Uh, It was really sad because, you know, not only is it really happening for her or to her, it's happening in front of us. On national television. On national television. television. That's the thing for me, honey. That's what's funny. And I don't believe, I don't believe it was scripted. I believe it was real. I believe that was a real situation that actually happened where he stood her the fuck up. Now I see if he may have stood her up in New York and didn't show up like he was supposed to do but not only did you not come to all of the gatherings but you had me sit in the cold first of all Sheree, why was you sitting in the cold they didn't have no room inside you couldn't well, probably- inside that restaurant <laughs> I, she couldn't I don't sit know. inside the restaurant Maurice. I, I don't know why they were sitting outside maybe for privacy i don't know <laughs> Maurice, she could have went inside, sitting out in that damn cold. I, I don't know why. Maybe she'll tell us at the reunion, child. One of the questions I'm going to tweet, because I want to know why was you sitting out in that cold? I just felt so bad for Sheree because Sheree's a beautiful woman, and she does not deserve that. What That, that would have pissed me off. One thing I cannot stand, Trey. Mm-hmm. I cannot stand for nobody to waste my time. Do yeah. not waste my time. This woman called an Uber, a Lyft from New York to Philly. That was money on top of that. And you had me sitting out there. You had her drive all the way there up under the pretense that you were going to show up. If you knew halfway through the trip that something was popping off with your parole officer or your lawyer, you should have called her. You should have texted her. But don't have me come all the way here and then I you just don't show up. That... I, don't waste my time, bitch. Do not waste my time. 
Do you feel Sheree is kind of kidding herself by trying to be in this relationship with this guy? Because he's in house arrest on probation in Philly. She's in Atlanta. Of course, he's trying to get to Atlanta from what she said. But is she kidding herself thinking that something like this is actually going to work? So that she was previously asked that on like seasons ago when we first mm -hmm. found out that she was dating someone that was incarcerated. And she said, no, she felt like this is this was her love of her life. It was yes, her soulmate is what yeah, she her, said. Her soulmate. But I feel like she's wasting her time. You got your you got yourself caught up in a situation where you're dating someone, you're investing time with someone who one was incarcerated, now is out of prison and is on house arrest. That's like me trying to say, okay, I can date someone who long distance who don't have a car. You know what I'm saying? Like that I mean, baby, I'm always gonna be coming to see you. <laughs> Do you date yeah. someone long distance without so, a car? I don't. Mm. You did? No, I, I haven't. Oh, okay. Because the way you giggle, it looked like he was telling the story, child. Like he had what I was saying was, what I was saying was, is that you're you're putting yourself out there in a situation where you already know there's going to be strain. You already know that there's gonna it's gonna it's gonna happen. So yes, I do feel like she's wasting her time. I mean, baby, you you've been in this situation for a long time now, and you actually set yourself to emotionally be drained, financially be drained. What can this man do for you? Is he working? You know, I've I've dealt with someone before who was that was incarcerated. <laughs> Yeah, I know. At the time, I didn't know that this individual was incarcerated. But once mm. I found out, I had then got a little attached. Call me crazy. I know stupid or whatever the case may be. And in my mind, I thought that, okay, when this mm -hmm. individual get out of jail, maybe mm. this could work. It was a colossal waste of time. So I would tell, don't, don't waste your time fooling up with nobody who's in jail. Caught up. Caught up. Random question. Do you take a dunk in front of your man? No, I do not. Really? Yeah. <clears throat> Why I mean, if there's a situation where uh, <laughs> he in the shower and I gotta go take a shit, I mean, no, I just don't. Mm -hmm. Would you be okay with your man taking a dunk in front of you? Like what I'm doing? No, I mean, your, your boo comes over and then he got a shit. He goes to your bathroom and shit. Is that a turn off for you? No, because baby, that's natural. You got a shit, go shit. Oh, okay. So you don't have a problem with that? No. Mm -hmm. When you say in front of, I don't say he's sitting in the bathroom and holding hands taking one. But if I have to take one at his, at his house, I've done that at his house. He's done it at mine. So yeah, I mean. Uh, what about <laughs> farting in front of your man? Do you fart in front of your man? I, I can't say Or do that. you go out the room or you, you squeeze your butt cheeks real and let it air out. <laughs> Where's this coming from? <laughs> Random. You know, some people find that stuff kind of weird. So I was just asking. And some people find that a turn on. What's, why is that a turn on shitting in front of your man, child? That's the reason why people like to be shitted on, child. Cat play. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. So another thing that the ladies were talking about were famous people who they were, I guess, in a relationship with or had been hit on. A so part of it. Mm -hmm. Jazzy Faye and Gene Simmons. Uh, Candy said, girl of birth. Girl. She was in a whole relationship. She had a whole song with him that's on her drive. That's on her <laughs> drive, ain't, girl. She just ain't put it out yet. Drew said LeBron James. Now, what did you think about that? Because I did always thought that LeBron James and his wife were high school sweethearts. Well, technically, she ain't say LeBron James. Girl, we know who she's talking about. Kenya said Prince. that was quite interesting that she actually said Prince or whatever. Okay, girl, bye. But speaking of Kenya, let me ask you a question. Do you think Kenya is wrong for trying to forge a relationship with her baby daddy and the child? Because the way Kenya is basically explaining to us is like she's trying to not make them have a relationship, but ensure that he gets to see Brooklyn. Firm believer of, of, of doing things that needs to be done for whatever reason it needs to be done for. And I don't know what her reason it is, honestly, mm -hmm. for it. Um, I, we, we know Kenya's history. She didn't have the best relationship with her mother, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe Kenya mindset, she's thinking that mm -hmm. it's important for her to make sure that her daughter has a relationship with her father. Kenya is doing a great job this season. I want to go ahead and put that out there. You all know that I'm not a fan of Kenya. I'm blocked by Kenya on Instagram, on Twitter. If you want to go ahead and reach out to her and ask her to unblock me, I'll agree. Appreciate it. Because I that, won't. We because won't. I am, because we I won't. am cheering for her this season. I feel you like- You probably were disrespectful at some point in time. In the past. I was. I was right. disrespectful at some time and I, and I will man up to it. I apologize for my words, but however, your actions and how you did what you did, what you did at the time that you did, it, I felt like my actions were correct, but I apologize. However, I feel like now is the time to unblock me or at a new time and day. I love Kenya this season. She's doing great this season. Um, I don't know if it's because Nini's not on there. That might possibly be it. Kenya 
was doing great in the past seasons too. Y'all just wasn't here for her. No, That's no, all. She wasn't, no, she was. Yes, doing, she was. She was doing great. Moving along. So let's talk about Sanya. So the girls, they went down to the play. They had a good time. Let's come up to the suite. Let's have some, some chicken strip. Right. Let's have some drinks. So Sanya decides that she wants to kind of talk to Drew about their relationship. Drew, I like you, but here's the reasons why I'm not really effing with you like that. It's because of the fact that I don't agree with some of the things that you're doing. So mm. maybe that's why I'm not standing up for you. Drew, being the actress that she is. I'm not, like, what are you talking about? I, I had no, I, I, and she's doing all this extra stuff. What did you think of Sanya's argument in that case? Like, do you well, think she had an argument or was she grasping for straws? She was reaching, reaching mm -hmm. out. Reaching out. Reaching out. Um, I'm kind of torn between the two because I feel like Sanya has some points, right? But those points could have been addressed one on one. There are multiple times where Drew and Sanya were one on one. When Drew went to go pick Sanya up from her her horrendous car accident, um, she could have addressed it then, right? To be honest with you, I don't think that her issues with Drew were that deep at that time. What I'm, what, I, what I'm getting to, what I'm getting to is that when she was alluding to what she was saying, it was like it was stuff that was adding up. It's not just that. You didn't feel this way after one episode or one trip to New right. York. But just like Drew said, you was just in my dressing room. If you really wanted to address something with me, you could have said, hey, y'all, can I have a moment? Can I talk to her real quick? Rather than you going to Kenya, which you know she don't really fuck with Kenya like that. They in a good space. They're in a good space, but she don't fuck with her like that. So I'm kind of torn because she had points, but I feel like those points could have been addressed just between It's giving me follow the leader type thing. I kind of felt like because of all of the ladies have had had issues with Drew. I kind of feel like Sonya being the new girl, not really knowing what to do, but maybe unsure about, should I just stand with this girl or should I just jump on a train that everybody else is on? I kind of feel like she did have some valid points, maybe, mm -hmm. but I, I just think that it's not really her valid point. She's just trying to jump on a train with everybody else. Everybody got an issue with Drew, so let me go ahead and start talking about my issue with Drew, which is why Drew may have been your Caught right. off guard, even though she's doing a whole bunch of acting. If you yeah, well, it was like attention. <laughs> attention. <laughs> so let's talk about drop it low, Drew, or drop it with Drew, whatever the hell that it is. Now, I did kind of feel like the ladies were giving Drew a hard time about this whole weight loss initiative or her business. If a person is trying to lose weight holistically, you're going to address their eating habits. You're going to address them exercising and working out. So how they were trying to say, well, Drew, what is that? I mean, is it weight loss? Is it meal prep? Holistic weight loss is all of those things, not just one particular thing. So I, I felt like they were kind of giving her a hard time unnecessarily with right, that. Right. But what I did find interesting, though, can you really take the advice of someone who had a whole mommy makeover? You're trying to promote this healthy lifestyle and you got these fat camp people losing weight, but you couldn't even lose your own weight. Can you take the advice of someone who cheated when it came to weight loss or are you still open to listening to them from that particular perspective? I think you very much can take advice because I think that everybody's situation is different, right? For example, my sister had three kids. Mm -hmm. Same exact amount of kids Drew had. But after my sister had her third child, and my sister, we know she worked out while she was pregnant, mm -hmm. but there's still that weight as a woman that she felt that she wanted to lose. She had her breast reduction. She had her um, work on her stuff. But she still works out because what she what she found out is that there was weight that she could not lose. I just continue to work out after having three kids. Right. So I feel like you can take an advice from her because she have, may have learned things in that process, in that journey that she can translate down to people who are trying to go through that same journey. It's a lot. When they was just harping on her, it was like everybody versus Drew, everybody versus Drew. I think with Drew is, I, I, I really want to like her. I really want to like Drew Trey. I really, <laughs> really do. But she does things like over explains things. The website, of course, is crashed. So the website isn't working. She has an excuse for that. Oh, I make a lot of money. This. Do you want me to show you how much money I make? When she said that, she called her business partner in a confessional trying to get the business partner to explain certain things. But then she had to say, oh, we're doing the app now. Anybody who has to go above and beyond to try to explain something, nine times out of ten, they're fucking lying. Sometimes it's lying, but I also I think that sometimes when they do that is that they are they have what they're talking about, but they're not in the forefront of it. What you mean? They, what? For example, if you and I was to create a website, right? Mm -hmm. And I know that you and I have a website. You know, I know that we have oh, this but we website. hire somebody else to do it. 
or or if you did it, if you did more than what I did on the website, I'm gonna know. Okay, let me call Maurice because Maurice is gonna know. You know what? He knows this about the website. You know what I'm saying? But why can't you just speak and say we got a website and just be confident in it versus you trying to? When a lot of people, when a lot of people coming at you at one time, when a lot of people coming at you one time, not in the confessional, not in the confessional trait. She was in the confessional and she doing it, Drew. I want to like you, girl, but you got to stop being so damn fake. It's just that something about you just seem unauthentic. She can really low-key kind of be like the new portion of the group. Okay, girl, bye. Did you hear that noise? What was it? Yeah, I, that was some, some shit that just happened. I don't know what the fuck was that. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What, what, is that? what is you doing with them lights? Did you just say the new Porsche? Okay, girl, bye. There would never be another Porsche, okay? All right? Oh, Porsche. girl. No. Ty, ain't nobody... Now, you know, Maurice, Porsche has done brought a lot to this damn um, Real Housewives of Atlanta. What? Besides violence? Baby, all of them have brought violence. Charade pulls, you know they have Zoziac hair. I'm about to no, you don't. You're about no, you don't. Get your hands off of me, you bitch. That's the shifting. That's classy fighting. They she didn't pulled her fight. hair. They didn't physically get into like it was, just a, whole, it was just a shifting of the wig. Kenya Moore had a whole whole loudspeaker in front of Cynthia Bailey and Portia's face. You are a dumb hoe. Shut up. Yeah, you want to hear me? I will you up. I will you up. No, 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 no. Portia is gutter. She's from the bottom. She's a gutter snipe. And, so and, and now she at the top. Came from the bottom, now she here. Top of what? The, the top of the gutter snipe? Uh, okay, yeah, whatever, Cheryl. She, she, she has her own businesses. But uh, you know one thing that I did like about... Know, she, she, now, she now engaged to a very wealthy man. She has a beautiful, beautiful daughter. Like, she has from the bottom to here. So don't come for no. Thank you guys so much for watching this review of The Real Housewives of Atlanta. She by herself. I mm -hmm. was like, oh, she oh my herself. God. It was the shadiest, the shadiest of all titles or whatever. But thank you guys so much for watching it. Make sure you like this video, share it on all of your social media platforms. And we will see you guys next week for episode six of The Real Housewives of Atlanta. Bye. Bye.